Hey, good evening, CNBC family. Welcome to another Wednesday Night Recharge. It is Wednesday, Wednesday, Wednesday. It is the last Wednesday in the month of March. You know, we're just moving along through this uh, through this new year. Uh, we have come, and I'm, I'm thanking you for gathering and joining us tonight as we spend some time in God's Word. Uh, I trust that you have had an awesome and blessed day today. Uh, we look forward uh, to this time and, and being with you and spending time in God's Word uh, because this is, what, this is what grows us, this is what prepares us, uh, this is what uh, sets our feet on a solid foundation. So uh, thank you for joining us as we all, always do. We want to spend a few minutes just sharing some announcements with you and bringing some things to the forefront. First of all, just want to say thank you. Uh, this past Sunday, we celebrated 83 years as a church family. We had an awesome time in the Lord, a great crowd there, uh, especially since having been involved in a pandemic for the last two years. So to see that number of people in the worship uh, was, was great. And to see those who had come back to share uh, and be with us, those who were former members of Corinth, uh, we really did have a great time. And I thank God for each of you. I thank God for our administration and, and our church family, our, our ministries for helping to make uh, that day an awesome day. We had an awesome word by Dr. Uh, Freeman, reflections and being able to look back and look at where God had brought us from. And so we thank God for that. Now uh, we are still in the midst of our time of fasting and praying together. Uh, we went into a 40 day time of fasting for Lent. Remember Lent is about reflection, it is about uh, growth, it is about change, it is about preparing our hearts uh, for the next place that God has for us in our lives. And so we're almost halfway through y'all. Tomorrow we'll make 20 days, we're almost halfway through. Thank each of you for joining us, especially in our time of prayer. And we continue to invite you to get in get the, uh, the, the call in number, get the code, and, and let's join in together as a, a family of God. I'm believing and I know that it is through agreement that God brings forth fruit out of what we're going to do and what we've been doing uh, these last few days. So let's keep that up, y'all. Uh, in connection with that, this coming Friday is our time of prayer together as a church family. So we've been coming together on the first Friday of each month and we spend time in prayer together. So let's meet at the church, 7 o'clock p.m., and we do exactly that. It's, it's just about prayer. Uh, then lastly, uh, there's an announcement that went out, uh, or should be going out, either uh, it would have went out last night or possibly tonight, uh, just informing you that there is a seven last words uh, that we're going to be participating in with Dr. Richardson uh, and, and, and Dr. Cindy Richardson, of Rich Word Ministries, and that's going to take place on Good Friday. Good Friday is actually when we end our time of fasting together. And so later on that evening, on Good Friday, 7 o'clock, uh, there's a Seven Last Words uh, presentation that will be done. That will take place at the Breath of Praise Community Church in Round Rock. And uh, you'll see that in the announcement so that you'll get the address. And we're inviting members of our church family. They're inviting us uh, to have others to come. And so we're making that invitation available to you uh, if you want to do that. God is, is, is blessing. I believe God is uh, continuing to bring us through this pandemic. And so we be coming together and gathering as a, as a body of believers. So you're welcome. Come and, and join us on that evening. I believe these are all of our uh, announcements. Uh, let's continue to govern ourselves accordingly. Uh, we want to also spend some time in prayer. Uh, there's, there's much to, to pray for, and so we seek our God uh, who is able and who is more than capable. Uh, there's nothing too hard for him, and so I invite you to go with me in a time of prayer as we think about the members of our church family that are sick, uh, those that are going through, uh, those that are being uh, attacked uh, and under assault by the enemy. Uh, we just, we just want to lift it all up. The, the word teaches us to lay it at his feet, to cast it upon him. So we're going to take all of our cares to him. Let's, let's bow together. Gracious God, our Father, we say thank you once again. Uh, just as we did earlier this morning, Father, when we got on the prayer line, uh, many of your children, uh, the Corinth Church, as well as family and our connections, 
gathered on the line this morning at six o'clock to give you thanks and to honor you and to give you the first fruits of our day. And then here we are right, right here again, Father, doing the same thing as we prepare to go into a word uh, of study. Uh, God, we lay at your feet all of our cares. Before we ask you of, of anything, Father, we want to say thank you for everything. Thank you for being so good to us. Thank you, Lord God, for this day. Thank you for keeping us throughout this day, Lord God. Thank you for providing for us this day. Thank you for protecting us, God, this day. We bless your name, Father, that, that in all that may have happened to us and all that we would have gone through this day, uh, Lord God, you allowed it because you wanted it to make us better. And you're blessing us because you wanted us to, to know the benefits uh, of being tied up and tangled up and tied up with you. And so, Lord God, we say thank you for all of it, all of it, the good and the bad of this day. We bless your name. Father, we come and ask God uh, that as you are our father, you who are the creator and maker of this world, you who sit high and you look low, we ask, Father God, that you would uh, continue to touch and to move, God, and to let your presence and your power be known in our lives. Whatever it is, Father, through sickness, uh, through doctor's reports, Father God, through uh, situations uh, that may be happening to us relationally or economically, Father God, we pray, Master, that by your power and through uh, your might, God, you move, Master, in our situation. Help us to see you. See you doing your thing, Father God. Line us up. Let your word line us up and keep us in the center of your will. As long as we're there, God, we're okay. We know that you are in control uh, and, and that all things can work together for our good. And so we bless your name, God. We lay our elders at your feet. We lay our children at your feet. We lay, Father God, our families, our, our relationships, our marriages, Father God, our church family, Lord, at your feet. And we pray, God, that you would have your way. God, get glory, get glory, get glory out of our lives. Let what we do, let what we say, Father God, shine the light not on us, but it shines a light on you, Father God. You get the praise. Men will glorify you because of how good you have been to us. Have your way, Father God. Now we spend time in this, your word. Help us, Father God, to receive. Help us, Father God, to learn, manifest, reveal some things, Father God, through this, your word that speaks to our very thing. You said you will send your word to our thing. So, Lord God, let your word uh, shine in the darkness of our places. Let your word, Father God, shine a light uh, and, and, and direct our path. So give us, God, your spirit, your presence. We pray and ask now in the name of your son, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Hey, Amen. All right, y'all, let's uh, get into our word. Uh, we are in Daniel chapter six. Daniel chapter, I'm sorry, not six, Daniel chapter seven. We're in Daniel chapter six. I'm looking at six here in my Bible, but we're in Daniel chapter seven. Uh, blessed of God always to thank uh, Sister Renfro uh, for helping us and uh, let's getting, uh, us getting this recorded uh, for tonight. It is Daniel chapter seven. We started in Daniel chapter seven on last week, Daniel's vision of the four beasts. And so that's where we're going to continue on tonight. Uh, I'm going to read that. I'm going to read that out of uh, the Christian study Bible, Holman's Christian study Bible, Daniel chapter seven, going back to verses one through eight that we lifted up on last week. It says that in the first year of Belshazzar, king of Babylon, Daniel had a dream with visions in his mind as he was lying in his bed. He wrote down the dream, and here is the summary of his account. Daniel said, in my vision at night, I was watching, and suddenly the four winds of heaven stirred up the great sea. Four huge beasts came up from the sea, each different from the other. The first was like a lion, but had eagle's wings. I continued watching until its wings were torn off. It was lifted up from the ground, set on its feet like a man and given a human mind. Suddenly another beast appeared, a second one that looked like a bear. 
It was raised up on one side with three ribs in its mouth between its teeth. It was told, get up, gorge yourself on flesh. While I was watching, another beast appeared. It was like a leopard with four wings of a bird on its back. It had four heads and was given authority to rule. While I was watching the night visions, a fourth vision, a fourth beast appeared frightening and dreadful and incredibly strong with large iron teeth. It devoured and crushed and it trampled with its feet whatever was left. It was different from all the beasts before it and it had 10 horns. Verse eight, while I was considering the horns, suddenly another horn, a little one came up among them and three of the force first horns were uprooted before it. There were eyes in this horn like a man's, and it had a mouth that spoke arrogantly. Uh, thus ended the reading of our scripture for tonight. Romans, I'm sorry, Daniel 7, Daniel 7, uh, verses 1 through 8. So last week we were introduced to uh, the beast that Daniel saw in his dream during the first year of Belshazzar's reign in Babylon. Uh, for a variety of reasons, modern commentators have generally agreed that chapter 7 is the single most chapter of the book of Daniel. Some have even called it the heart of the book of Daniel or that this chapter is one of the most important passages of the Old Testament. So we're in a, 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 I guess we would call it a good part, the meat of uh, the Bible here in Daniel chapter seven. So last week we talked about those four beasts <coughs> that came out of his dream. Uh, these, the, these beasts in Daniel's vision corresponded to the four metals of Nebuchadnezzar, uh, Nebuchadnezzar's dream. Remember Nebuchadnezzar's dream back in <coughs> chapter two. So in the, the vision Daniel had, the lion in his vision was similar to or corresponded to the head of gold that was in Nebuchadnezzar's dream. The bear in Daniel's vision compares to the arms and chest of silver with Nebuchadnezzar. The panther in Daniel's vision is the waist or thighs or the waist and thighs of brass in Nebuchadnezzar's dream. And then lastly, the composite beast in Daniel's vision is comparable to the legs of iron in Nebuchadnezzar's dream. So as we get into the meanings and interpretations of uh, his vision and others that will be brought forth in this second half of the book, we need to understand some fundamentals with regard to biblical apocalyptic. Biblical apocalyptic. Apocalyptic is uh, the Greek name or came from a Greek word meaning revelation came from the Greek word meaning revelation. So basically, in order to un some, understand some things with regard to biblical revelation, uh, we need to understand some principles. It should be understood as an actual account of what the writer saw and heard rather than creative literature that's used by the writer as a communication tool. So what we read here in Daniel, we ought to, we ought to believe it as what he actually saw in his vision. Uh, not, not something that a writer is bringing up uh, to make it flow and fit. No, this is what he saw. And so let's leave it at, at that. Now, from this, though, uh, and what he saw, those things symbolize a meaning. Symbolism is key. It's a key element in apocalyptic. Again, that word meaning revelation. And these symbols sometimes have baffled readers of the book of Daniel and the book of Revelation. And usually the meaning of figures is explained in the text itself. When this is not the case, their significance is often found in other scriptures. So he's saying here uh, that what we read, uh, it will be explained either through the particular text or either in other scripture passages uh, within the Bible. I was listening to, I didn't complete it, uh, but yesterday on the way to work, I was listening to Dr. Tony Evans and he was talking about biblical prophecy and he's in the book of Revelations and he was referring to passages out of the book of Daniel. And so again, uh, what we see here in Daniel uh, can be explained also in passages found in Revelations. A valid principle of interpreting prophecy is to accept the plain sense of the text 
unless there's good reason to adopt some other meaning. So we take it as it is. We let, let's take it at face value. And I say all that to begin with, in Daniel's first vision, in his vision, the first beast was like that of a lion. And this lion had four wings. And so we've said the lion represents the rule of Babylon over the then known world. A lion is ferocious. Uh, a, a lion, he, he is the king of the jungle. And so in that time, Nebuchadnezzar was it, his kingdom, his rule, uh, he was it. Now the wings of the lion denoted the ability of the armies of Babylon to move speedily in taking over and conquering other nations. So not only is this a ferocious lion who, who rules, but he also has the ability to move his armies because the wings on this lion's back uh, speak to that, that he has the ability to move his army wherever it needs to go in order to conquer other nations. The secret of any good military is the ability to deploy swiftly and to strike mightily. And again, if, if, if that's um, not an example or a, a, a relevant uh, term uh, for us to think about and look at today as we uh, reflect on what's happening right now with regard to Ukraine, and we, we hear on the news how the Russian army had been bogged down uh, and it was unable to move swiftly like it thought. It thought it was going to take over Ukraine in a matter of um, days or possibly uh, a week or so, but their, their army got bogged down. They wasn't able to move as fast. They ran out of gas. They didn't expect the ground to be as warm, and so therefore their tanks were getting bogged down. And so the, 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 the ability of any good military to move uh, is, is, is the way it can conquer and uh, take over quickly. Nebuchadnezzar's army had that capability. The plucking, though, of the wings of this lion and being made to stand upon his feet speaks to the period of Nebuchadnezzar's insanity and then being restored with a renewed heart. So again, remember, go back to what we talked about and how Nebuchadnezzar got so lifted up in pride that he actually lost his mind. Mental illness took over and uh, he, he, was, he was crazy in his head to the point where he even acted like uh, a beast of the field, ate grass like a beast of the field. But then God came in and restored to him his sanity and put him back into a place of leadership because he renewed his, his mind. And now Nebuchadnezzar is talking about the great God of Daniel, uh, the creator of the world. And so, and so that's what uh, Daniel's vision speaks to when it comes to the lion. All right, let's talk about the bear, the symbolism of the bear. The second beast was like a bear, noted for its great size and fierceness in battle. And it corresponded with the media Persian empire. Now this was the empire that struck down the Babylonians and took over Egypt. The ribs in the mouth that was mentioned in the text uh, between its teeth, it speaks of the empires that they've already conquered, Babylon, Lydia, and Egypt, which had been conquered by the media Persian army. It was a huge force rumbling through and devouring other nations. I believe this text here says, gorge yourself on flesh. This, is, this was the, the bear. This was uh, this, this army, this Persian uh, army and the way it, it moved. And so this was Daniel's representation uh, with the bear. Third beast resembled is that of a leopard. Here we go, a leopard. Now, Dr. McGee says it's probably better translated as a panther, but this, this beast represented a, a leopard or panther uh, because of how it leaps within, with a suddenness upon its prey. Uh, you, you, you've seen cats before, and you see how they, they sneak up on their prey and they're quiet, but then they, they pounce with a quickness. It's so quiet and, and it's so cunning that it's upon you before you even know it. This is how the panther uh, moves. This was the Greco-Macedonian empire of Alexander the Great. He was quiet, he was stealth, and he would pounce on you, another nation, quickly before you had uh, any knowledge of what was going on. The four wings, again, speak to the speed and the ability of his army 
to strike suddenly. The four heads of the panther symbolized the four nations that would come from this empire so that when Alexander the Great died, his kingdom was split between his four generals. So again, uh, we said the first part of Daniel's book spoke of prophecy or spoke of history uh, as prophecy. Now we are seeing how all of this has come to pass. All we got to do is go back and look in our history books and see how it all uh, came to pass. Now we're in a part of the book that speaks of prophecy to now be revealed and shown in, hu uh, in history. So this is where we're about to, to, to move. So now, lastly, the fourth beast is very unusual. This fourth beast is a composite of, of, of beasts. It's, 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 it's different. It's different. It cannot be described like, uh, like the others, describing them with animals. Um, nothing uh, that existed could be used and tied to what you're seeing in this fourth beast. Nothing currently existed. This animal is different from all other form of beast because of its great power, its fierce appearance, and because it evidently was larger. So it was larger than all the other beasts in his vision. More attention is given to this beast because we are living in the time of this beast. So what he is prophesying back then, we are living in that time now. We are living in the time of the fourth beast. Um, and, and this fourth beast is the Roman Empire. So remember when we're talking about the ten toes of the statue of Nebuchadnezzar uh, and that applied to the Roman Empire. So that's what Daniel's talking about here in his prophecy. He's talking about the Roman Empire. The Roman Empire dominated the world for a millennium. That's how strong and mighty and powerful they were. Uh, its influence, its power saturated the world with dread and terror, especially against those who resisted. And, and though the Roman army, uh, this empire of ten toes, fell apart, that Roman uh, empire, it still exists today. It still exists today in many nations in Europe, in the Mediterranean, and North Ar Africa. So the reason this vision is so significant to us is because we are living in some period of this time involving uh, this last beast. Keep in mind that this former empire is being brought back together uh, as one, uh, despite their different governmental structures, their ideology, their viewpoints, they're being brought back together as one. And we said last week, we can see that. Uh, we can see that evidence in the beginning of the European Union that was formed back in 1993. And as Dr. Uh, Evans was teaching on yesterday, uh, the euro, the euro, there's one form of co uh, commerce, uh, uh, currency, one form of currency in, in Europe. And they, that has been brought about. And so all of these things are coming. All of these things are being formed. History reveals that the first three prophecies of Daniel have already been fulfilled. So what happened to Nebuchadnezzar and Babylon? What happened to uh, Persia? What happened to uh, the, the Greeks and uh, Alexander the Great? All of those things have taken place. This is the last piece. This is the last part. And we're in that part now. We're in that part now. So all we have left is the fourth. And this fourth is talking about the future the ten horns, the ten horns. The ten horns will be ruled by one who comes up among them or rises to power such that three kingdoms are swallowed up or uprooted by this new ruler. So when he's talking about in verse eight, uh, there, there's this, this horn, another horn coming up out of the ten, a little one, but it comes up, it grows to power. The first and, and three of those first horns are uprooted. They are all swallowed up in the, the rulership of this new uh, king, this new power that rises by and, and, and done by a new ruler. It says the eyes mentioned in the text are symbolic of intelligence or insight or wisdom. So in verse eight, there were eyes in this horn like a man. So this new ruler in this has, has wisdom and has understanding and has insight. Daniel predicts that this new ruler will be brilliant and arrogant. 
His message will be revolting to the believers, but the world will fall in love, fall under his spell of his winsome words, his captivating personality. So this is, this is the one that speaks with a mouth, a uh, smooth talker, but he's arrogant, but he's able to capture the attention of the world. Remember, these, these, these winds of agitation and propaganda coming from this uh, one ruler, this individual, will be known as the Antichrist. He's the infinite, infamous personality to, to, to come. He's the one that's talked about in other passages of scripture, especially 2 Thessalonians 2 verses 3 through 12, where Paul calls him the man of sin or the son of perdition. The early Bible scholar Jerome identified him as one of the human race in whom Satan will wholly take up his residence in bodily form, the Antichrist. He is coming out of these 10 horns, uh, these 10 uh, nations that were brought about by the Roman Empire. This person will come out of that structure. Daniel's predicting that this final kingdom will usher in a powerful empire made up of a confederation of kingdoms or nations out of the ashes of the old Roman Empire. This final empire will have incredible power for by its force and, and the Antichrist will rule the whole earth. I pray that all of these lessons and everything that we're looking at uh, help us to see the pages of scripture that are being unfolded as we, as we uh, move to uh, what will happen with regard to the Antichrist and, and the battle that is to come in the, in the next uh, few verses that we begin to look at. Uh, we'll begin to see, I hope, how a lot of these things start to kind of fall into place. And again, it is, it is not for us to be afraid. It is not for us to be uh, terrified. It is for us to be made aware, uh, to be informed, and so that we, we, we know how to how to react because we know our God is in control. He's already shown us in his scripture that he is in control. And so you and I uh, don't have to act out of fear, but we act out of faith. And we use that faith to help us and direct us. And hopefully, hopefully because of how others see us, how non-believers see us, it would cause them to ask the question, what is it about them? What is it about him? What is it about her that does not have them running, uh, wondering how is the world and why is the world falling apart? I, I look at what's happening with regard to Ukraine and then I look at the scripture and say, you know what? This has been happening throughout history. Some individual thinking that they have the power to take over and rule nations. Nebuchadnezzar was one. Alexander the Great was one. Matter of fact, he said Alexander got depressed because he felt like that, you know, he wondered, were there any other nations and people he could conquer? But people who thought they had the right to rule others. So what was happening in history is happening now. No, we're not at the end, but we're in the end, okay? And we're seeing those things come to play. And my prayer is that you and I as believers in Jesus Christ, uh, that we won't be here when, when it gets real ugly, when it's real bad, that you and I will have been raptured. But we want to make sure that we spread the word, we spread the news of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ so that others can come along with us and they won't have to endure some of the things that are coming down the pipe with regard to the revelation that Daniel is giving us in scripture. Amen. Let's pray. Father God, we say thank you again. Uh, for your word. We thank you, Father, that you are the kind of God that wants to inform and let us in on what you are doing. No, you don't explain everything to, to us. You don't, you don't provide a, a, a revelation of all of your mysteries. Some things you require us to just stand uh, in faith. But then, Father God, there are places, even in your word, where you're revealing to us and you're showing us uh, your plan, what your desire is. And we thank you, Lord God, that you would include us. Father, I pray and ask that you would continue to watch over and keep us, direct us, Father God, according to your word. Be with your people, Lord God, is my prayer. In the name of your son, Jesus the Christ, amen.